Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So in today's video I'd like to talk a bit about the concept of adaptability and resilience and what it means in not only survival situations but just in life in general. I think one of the most favorite motivational quotes I have is a quote from a line of the character in Rocky Balboa where he says that it's not about how hard you can hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving. And I think that rings true in so many aspects of life, not only in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation, but just in life in general. And so much of survival, especially in a world that we envision, one which is drastically changed from the one that we enjoy right now, you're going to have to be able to let go of the things that you've come to know and be familiar with. And that's not going to be easy for everybody to do. There's another quote that I enjoy that says, if you want to be successful and happy in life, you need to be willing at any time to give up the person you are for the person that you could be. I think those are very powerful words. Most people are familiar with the five stages of grief and loss. There's denial, bargaining, anger, depression, and acceptance. And anything that you lose in life, you're gonna, in some order, go through those processes. Some people go through it faster than others. And of course, it depends on how attached and how dependent you are on whatever it was that you lost. It's going to be important that you can get through this grieving process expeditiously. And part of the reason why people struggle with moving on is because people become so attached to what they know. And it's because as human beings, we naturally want to control things. It's one of our strengths, but it's also one of our greatest weaknesses that once the rug is pulled out underneath us, we have little to stand on and many people panic and get afraid and drift down into depression. So when I talk about survival of the fittest, indeed a part of that strength is going to be your ability to forego your losses and to move on, to be adaptable to the changing circumstances that you find yourself in, to accept that what's gone is gone. It was fun while it lasted but now it's over and I have to make do with what I have now. That's going to be the difference between who lives and who dies. As preppers, we try to stockpile stuff and skills as well. But even skills, there's a difference between having a skill set and being adaptable. Because your skill set might be relevant in one context and not relevant in another. But I think the general tendency of preppers is to try to hold on to some semblance of this lap of luxury that we've enjoyed for the past however many decades and carry it over into whatever post-collapse scenario they might find themselves in. Most, I think, now are realizing that no matter how much you prep, there's going to be a downgrade in the standard of living. But there's many who still cling to this idea that they're going to be able to replicate the world they're living in now after some widespread disaster situation, which I think is just unrealistic. Unless you have incredible amounts of wealth, resources, to invest in recreating and sustaining that experience for yourself. But for most of us, it's not going to be realistic. I think about the people who lost their homes in the Fort McMurray wildfires who have no choice now but to move on. Like I said before, you have to be willing to at once let go of everything that you've become, of everything that you've hoarded, of all of the stuff that you find security in and have faith in your ability to adapt to changing circumstances. As human beings, we have an incredible potential to live on any part of this planet. And it's largely in part due to our ability to innovate and use technology 
to help us survive. There's a concept in psychology called functional fixedness. And it's this notion that you can only, most people when they look at an item, they only see that item for what it was socially intended for. So you might see a hammer, for instance. Some people, when they see the hammer, that's all they see is just something that can drive a nail into a wall. Other people might see other potential for the hammer. You know, you could use it as a counterweight. You could use it as a pry bar. So your ability to use things in your environment for tasks that they weren't originally intended for is one aspect of this adaptability that I'm talking about. In season two, episode nine of the show alone, Jose finds some boys on the beach and he uses them as outriggers for this canoe he made. That's not succumbing to functional fixedness. There's a variety of different things. Even a milk jug out there in that situation could be used as a flotation device. It's an incredible amount of technology that we have at our disposal that most people are not going to be able to see the possibilities that lie there and are going to be stuck on viewing it for its intended purpose in this current paradigm that we have right now. But your ability to see the alternative possibilities, and it's very hard to do this because our brains operate in such a way that, you know, they want to categorize and organize things in order for us to survey our surroundings in an efficient manner. Unfortunately, this comes at the cost of really being stuck. And you'll see this with a lot of optical illusions is that our sensory perception apparatus is very rigid sometimes. It's very hard for us to break certain associations that we have. I think the fundamental thing you can take away from this talk is that it's important to keep an open mind, to be able to turn off what you think should be the case to consider what might be the case. And there's so many people who are firmly entrenched in their beliefs about politics or religion. They leave no other options open for anything else. And now I see the benefit in having some degree of conviction and certainty with certain things in life, because that's the only way you can really connect any dots and make any progress whatsoever and move in one direction. Otherwise, you're just aimless and being pulled in all these different directions. But a person should be willing to, at any point, if you consider yourself a rational thinker, to be able to step back and say, okay, I don't know anything. What can I do with what's in front of me right now? That's the only way you're not gonna be stuck on functional fixedness. It's the only way you're going to see all the possibilities that your mind is blocking out. There's something called a scotoma, which is another word for blind spot. And this is what happens in a lot of optical illusions is that we don't see something because for whatever reason, maybe the question that was asked misled us in some way. This is something which magicians use. They get you to focus on one thing so you don't see another thing. A scotoma is just a blind spot, but it's not just a visual blind spot. It's a mental blind spot. And it's a possibility we rule out because we, for whatever reason, have been conditioned to think that that's preposterous or that, that just doesn't fit. A core th aspect of adaptability is to be able to open your mind, open your senses, open your perceptions, and to be able to reassess the information that's coming at you. So that coupled with the fact that you have to be able to let go, go through that grieving process, you don't wanna go through it too fast. I mean, you don't want to repress the emotions that you might have in grieving. And so let's 
take an example here. So if you were to, if there was a large scale disaster and you lost somebody, you don't want to just pretend like it's no big deal and move on and go right to acceptance. What that can lead to is uh, some form of post-traumatic stress disorder. A lot of times you won't have the option, you'll have to do this, which is what many people do in combat is they just suck it up but later on it comes back to haunt them because everybody has to go through that grieving process. What tends to happen is that they don't go through it and many people gravitate towards addictions. And you know what addictions are? I can tell you right now that all addiction really is is people's inability to adapt, to change. Because all addicts have been scarred on some level and they haven't recovered from that instead of recovering from it and going through that process of grief that you have to go through many hold on to it and this is the, the whole thing with letting go and being adaptable it's like imagine you know you have to get somewhere but you're holding on to this baggage that's just weighing you down, you're holding on to it and you refuse to let it go. But the only way you're gonna get to your destination that you need to get to is if you let this go. You might get there hauling this baggage around, but chances are it's gonna take you a long time to do that. So yeah, you gotta be willing to let things go and that's probably gonna take some measure of spirituality for me personally I'm confident and I'm hopeful that there's a greater purpose to life than what meets the eye so when things do come into my life and when they go I'm getting better at saying goodbye and enjoying the fact that it was a stepping stone towards something that's hopefully going to be better maybe not just for me but for others in the future so i hope uh, that was useful for you today thanks for watching canadian prepper out Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.